we are familiar with the spin series of the famous Law and Order, Law and Order Special Victims Unit, or SVU as we call it. We see the television drama surrounding this unit, but is this really how such cases are handled? Joining us now is Police Sergeant Conti Rogers of the St. Christopher and Nevis Royal Police for Special Victims Unit. Welcome to Good Morning SCAN. Welcome. Pleasure Good to meet you, morning. Sergeant. Good morning and thank you. All right, welcome. so how long has the SVU been in place here in St. Continuous? Um, the SVU was created in 2012. Yeah, okay. Hmm. So we have a blazing 12 years. Well, ten. No, 10 Four years. Chances. 10. I'm too excited to put right. two on everything. Can I ask a follow-up? The question is, uh, obviously we didn't have it before then. Policing, as we know, was something that was part of our society ever since you know, we were established. What was the driver for having the launch be in 2012? It was created because of the number of reports of domestic violence and juvenile-related matters and sexual offenses that were coming in. The High Command of the Royal St. Christopher Nevis Police Force saw it fit to create a specialized unit to deal with those reports. Mm. That's exactly what I thought. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So how many officers are in this unit and are they all female? There are eight officers in the unit, okay. six female and two males. Okay, good stuff, good stuff. All right, so obviously you've given us a sense already as to what the SVU deals with. Uh, in relation to juvenile matters, do they have to be sexual only or, you know, is it something else? Is it wider than that? We deal with the serious domestic violence. Mm -hmm cases and um, the district stations are now dealing with the, those that are not so serious. Mm -hmm. Before time we dealt with all. All right, so can you tell me what distinguishes serious from not so serious? Okay, we have the petty ones like the pushing which will result to a battery okay. or just a verbal abuse but these are the serious ones. Mm -hmm. So then the district station will deal with these I'm sorry, these are the, the minor ones. Mm -hmm. So the district stations will deal with the minor ones. But when it comes to more serious ones, like inflicting grievous bodily harm, where serious harm was inflicted, the SV will deal with these. And we continue to deal with the sexual violence, the rapes and unlawful carnal knowledge, and stuff like that. Okay, so this is where, again, uh, that scope for dealing with uh, juveniles comes in. Yes, okay. yes. We used to deal with the, the fights and everything that takes place at the schools, but now all the district station are dealing with all those petty juvenile matters. So you're able to focus more on... Yes, the and the more serious okay, ones. Great. Without giving away too much information, can you tell us what is involved in the Special Victims Unit training? Okay, um, the training involves child abuse, how, how to interview a child victim, okay. how to go about dealing with a rape, the medical aspect of it, because the person must be medically examined, and we have to know the, the procedures, interviewing techniques and stuff like that. Mm, yeah. And that's very important because you don't want to make a mistake and then have a case thrown out because you did something wrong. Exactly, and we don't want to ask the wrong question. Okay, mm -hmm. fair enough. Mm. Uh, I'm not sure this is part of your work, but I'll ask it anyway. Uh, your work tends to rely on victims coming forward. So if somebody is reluctant to come forward, uh, you don't really pressure them in any way, do you? That's not what you do. Well, there were times when the special victim unit received a report, and uh, we tried to get the complainant to come in to give a statement. We schedule an appointment with that person and several appointments have been scheduled and the person just don't show up. So sometimes we have to end up going by the home or going on the workplace to look for this person to find out why is it you're not coming? And then they will say, oh, we made back up, we are back together. <laughs> I don't want anything further. But mm. how will we know that? Mm. When they're not answering the phone and they're not showing up to the appointments. And I suppose that makes it more mm. difficult for you, but at the same time, again, your work relies on uh, the complainant actually supporting what you do. Exactly. Because whether or not they, they want to go to court, we still want to record a statement from them mm, for the okay. records, mm. just in case something else happened. Mm. That's very important as well, because you have those yes. records, of course. Okay, that makes mm, sense. Yes. Oh, wow. 
Hmm. So we often hear about victim shaming. She shouldn't have worn this or that. She was drunk. She came to him. Or as we say locally, she hot from long time. What and how does the SVU address these types of statements? This is in relation to domestic, right? I would like, I would want to think it's like she's dressing too racy, so maybe she got raped. Okay, um, it doesn't matter how someone dresses. Each person, body should be respected regardless mm -hmm. of their race, mm -hmm. their nationality, or their status. A prostitute can get raped. Yes, we know that for sure. So clothing doesn't have anything to do with it. Yeah. It's about the, the behaviors and the attitudes, really, because consent is everything, and if you don't have it, yes. then it becomes a problem. It doesn't matter what you started. You exactly. need to have consent continuously. Exactly. The issue of consent is very, very important in the cases of rape. Mm. Um, Ms. Rogers, have you had cases where people would have reported the rape and because they would have been threatened, they would have recanted their statements and decided they're not going forward with the trial? How does the SVU deal with something like this yes there, there were cases where persons decided not to go any further because they were threatened when this happens some of the time the persons go to the dpp office and they express that they don't want to go through with the matter and if they if they do that the police cannot you know no press them because sometimes they, they, they left the country and sometimes they go to court and they just don't say anything. Mm -hmm. So it's basically a waste of time. Sometimes. Wow. All right, so there, there's something that's actually kind of bugging me and I'm going to say it to you because I'm pretty sure that you get this a lot. When we think of SVU, we generally think the victim has to be female, but we know that is not necessarily the case. You cater no. for both male and female victims. Exactly. It's important that that gets out there. Yes, we have cases where males are the victims as well. Yeah. Some of these matters where males are victims has already, has already gone before the magistrate court. Mm. Okay. Yeah, so we do have some male victims. Now, we were just talking about educating children, well, just educating society in order to prevent some of these things that happen and that will eventually reach to your unit. Now, how soon should we begin this type of education? I think that the education should start at the preschool level because uh, these children are very smart, you know, not because they're small. <laughs> they witness a lot of domestic violence, mm -hmm. a lot of the, the beating and the verbal abuse. And sometimes when they go to school and they have their, their free time, their play mm -hmm. time, they act it out on their friends. Yeah. They're slapping and they choking and they're pushing. And the words. So too. I think that it should start at that level. and. Forums like these are very important as well because everybody will not be at a sitting at a church or at a school to, mm. to hear yes. sessions on domestic violence. Some persons will go on the Facebook page and, and other forums and they will get the education. So there is a need for education at all levels of society. And as you talk about education, mm. during the break, we were engaging in this discussion about the fact that we are a somewhat hypersexualized society. It's in our culture where, you know, you're in the workplace and men tend to be touchy-feely, making suggestive jokes, whatever, with colleagues, etc. And we think that's commonplace. Yet, with what you do, you're going to have to try to balance that with claims of harassment. And I was asking you exactly, well, where do you draw the line? What can be done with that? And how does that complicate your work if society tends to think, this is normalized behavior. There, there was nothing wrong with that. You see, that is why the education is important because uh, someone can be abused for many years and did not realize that they were a victim until they were really educated. Look, this thing should not be happening to you. Mm -hmm. You should not be working and your partner taking away your money and giving you back what they feel like. Mm -hmm. This is abuse. Nobody's supposed to be following you around to see who you talk to, taking away your phone and searching it and stuff like that. Wow. This is abuse. So the education now will make people aware that they are a victim and that they need help. Because domestic violence is a major issue in our country. And it is important for persons to be aware 
if they are a victim or if someone they knew, they know is a victim so that they can get the relevant help. Do you think it's swept under the rug though? Do you think it has been culturally swept under the rug so people just bottle up what's going on and so obviously you get reports but I know that that is in no way shape or form representative of all the incidents that occur. I think it's cultural for some persons, maybe persons who are not from here, like persons who come from different countries like um, like say Guyana and Africa, it might be cultural for them, but education, once they come here and they realize that, no, mm -mm. there no, is so. zero tolerance for domestic violence in St. Kitts, mm -hmm. then they will measure up and they will understand that I am not, a, I am now aware that I am a victim and this should stop. So, Ms. Rogers, how do you feel? You would have helped somebody out of this um, abusive situation, right? Yes. And there are, maybe after a few months, they go back with this same person. Mm. How hard does that hit you that basically they don't see themselves worthy and they're back in something that's hazardous for them? Yes, we see a lot of this, a lot. But we have to do what we can do. Okay. Because at the end of the day, we cannot make any choices for persons as it regards to the relationship. Mm -hmm. So if they, if they get leaked today and they come and they make the report, the police has a duty to respond and deal with the report. And if they choose to go back and get leaked again, when they come again and make the report, we deal with the report. Okay. We tell them the options, what the police can do. We can warn the perpetrator. We can put the matter before the magistrate court. Or sometimes we advise them to speak to a lawyer because sometimes they might want a restraining order and they prefer to speak to a lawyer to make the application on their behalf. Mm. So we, we have them coming all the time, we, we repeated victims, mm. but we try our best to, to help, help them, them. Okay. until they decide, oh, well, I had enough. Because yeah, with I'm the finished. recent um, situation that we had in the country, in Sandy Point, like mm -hmm. that, I'm sure, well, from the video we see, multiple reports were made but then we went back now the eventual is that one of them lost their lives yes it, sh it should not be Gone like that, that. Yeah. you know there should have been some intervention you know wow. to help both parties the perpetrator and the victim yes yeah. right, well, i want to talk to you now about actual living victims in this case as it relates to rape and the question is uh, do we have rape kits here and i'll preface that by saying as well that what I know of rape kits, even from SVU and, uh, you know, journalists as they talk about it, is that mm -hmm. it seems like the victim is violated all over again when those samples have to be taken. So do we have rape kits here and what does that entail? Yes, we have rape kits. The rape kits contain fingernail clip because sometimes during the struggle, the victim uses her fingernail to, you know, Scrap try to... It's a clock. Yes. So we have the fingernail clipper. We have a comb. This comb is used to comb the pubic area, mm. you know, because uh, during the sexual encounter, they may be here fibers from the perpetrator so you left onto the victim. Well. Okay. Yes. Right. Yes. We, we take vaginal swabs. They have vaginal swabs in the kit. There is... um. Even the, the, the sheet, a sheet of paper that the victim is to, to lie on while the medical examination is being conducted. Mm. So the kid has in everything for the forensic medical examination. Any comment on whether or not it is invasive? No. Okay. Mm. I appreciate that. Well, I'm excited about this. We learned that you are a polygraph examiner. Oh, yes, I am. I'm the only female in the force. You go, girl. Did you become interested? When did you become interested in this field of polygraph? In 2014. Mm, nice. Mm, congrats. Thank you. And why, what made you get into it? Well, I see polygraph science as something that is relevant as a major investigative tool and when I was given the opportunity to go to polygraph school, 
I, I took it mm -hmm. because I figured this is something that I can have even when I retire from the police force. Nice. nice. It is a very good investigative tool. Mm, nice. Mm. All right. Well, we're glad that you have that skill. Just a follow-up question, Sergeant, concerning rape. And this is, if a person is raped, how soon after that crime should that report be made? And does that have any implications for the uh, DNA that you would collect if you have to perform, you know, uh, those examinations vis-a-vis -vis a rape, a rape camp? The earlier, the better. Mm -hmm. Because uh, when it is fresh, we will we'll be able to get all of the physical evidence mm -hmm. in terms of the, the trace evidence that may be on the victim. We will be able to get the story when it is fresh in the victim's mind. We will be able to visit the scene and collect any evidence that is left at the scene. So yes. the earlier, it is better. If somebody is raped today and they report it next year, December, makes no sense. you know, they already bathe a lot of times. Those clothes have been washed. The scene may have been maybe at the time when they were raped. It was a board house. The house already knocked down and is a concrete house. So it's easier and better for right the away. victim to report it as soon as possible because this helps to strengthen the case and it's always best for the victim to tell somebody because that person will be the recent complete witness okay. it's always good to tell somebody yeah. instead of keeping it to yourself and then you don't have any corroboration you know, there should be someone you trust to let them know what happened. Mm. But notwithstanding the fact that somebody might not report it in 24 hours or 48 hours within the time when they were raped, they can still report it. Okay. We will still take the report and do the necessary investigation and submit the file.